Not two days after I decided to make my first Battlefield video in over a year, does something absolutely insane happen. But as I said in that video, I did promise to keep you up to date with what's coming for the next Battlefield game, and perhaps in this case, what might now not be coming. EA announced on Wednesday evening, aligning themselves with pretty much the rest of the gaming and tech industry, that they were cutting jobs and making people redundant. About 5% of their workforce were being let go. Now this is obviously really sad for the individual developers affected, and I hope they are able to find roles quickly. But in terms of Battlefield, the announcement was particularly devastating because it came with the news that the entire Ridgeline Game Studio, recently set up by Marcus Leto in 2021, was being shut down, completely closed. When you look at the wider tech landscape and all the layoffs happening, this is comparatively small compared to the likes of Microsoft and others, but it's still going to hit pretty hard. Now, if you've been keeping up with all the Battlefield news already, you'll know that Marcus Leto, Halo co-creator and the founder of Ridgeline Games, has already left EA of his own accord about a week or so ago, or at least that's when the news of that broke. Now, seeing that the entire studio that they helped found has just been shut down by EA, that doesn't look fantastic for the upcoming Battlefield title set to release in late 2025. Now, according to a statement from EA, Marcus Leto made a personal decision to leave the project and the Ridgeline studio would be wound down with some of the team members there joining Ripple Effect, another of the studios that's working on the upcoming Battlefield game. The statement itself actually led with Marcus Leto's departure and that led me to believe that the move is one of the main reasons the studio is being shuttered because it's lost its leader. I could be completely wrong, however. The statement goes on to say that to ensure work on the single player elements of the upcoming title continued without being interrupted, leadership at Criterion Games in Guildford in the United Kingdom were appointed to oversee development. Which is quite interesting actually because you might remember back in 2020 EA made a similar move for Battlefield 2042, bringing Criterion on board to help develop the game and take it over the finish line. Now that move also came with the infamous statement that Battlefield 2042 was quote, ahead of schedule, end quote, which turned out to be, to put it lightly, wholly inaccurate. And you'll notice that this time there is absolutely zero mention of how the project is faring. And that's pretty smart on EA's end. They're protecting themselves after being too loose-lipped last time around. Now, digging into this a little bit more, I think we might need to, right now, readjust our expectations for whatever single-player experience may present itself for the next Battlefield game. When you shut down an entire studio founded to focus on narrative and world-building for the franchise, letting most of those developers go and the studio leader personally choosing to leave the project, that says to me that whatever Ridgeline was working on may well now be reduced in scope or perhaps scrapped entirely. Now, the statement released by EA does mention that the decision to appoint Criterion to oversee the work and continue uninterrupted might conflict with the idea that everything is being scrapped, but shifting an entire pillar of the game from one recently founded dedicated studio over to a development team who've assisted on the last two Battlefield titles and who also work on their own games that doesn't inspire me with a huge amount of confidence that the project that Ridgeline was working on will remain as is when it moves over to Criterion. EA is saying that it will, but, you know, this is a pretty big change. I do think it's worth taking a look around at the environment that this announcement is coming in. I do see a lot of people online saying that the closure of Ridgeline Games is somehow a reflection of what EA thinks will happen with the next Battlefield game. Maybe they project that it's not going to sell as well as it was, and they're kind of just like cutting out a part that is costing them a lot of money. But realistically, when you look at the wider tech and gaming sphere at the moment, we're going through a pretty big retraction after a massive push over a couple of years ago, Microsoft recently bought Activision Blizzard and then laid off just huge numbers of staff. Sony announced not long ago a bunch of layoffs at their PlayStation Studios. Epic Games, I think earlier this year or maybe late last year, they announced layoffs as well. So many studios around the world right now are letting developers go, which is really sad. So this closure of a studio working on Battlefield, it's not happening in isolation. It's not like other studios around the world are not also 
experiencing layoffs. And it's not the only EA studio that is being somewhat affected by this change in direction. Respawn Entertainment, the team behind Apex Legends and Titanfall, they had an in-progress Star Wars action FPS game centered around the Mandalorian IP cancelled in this same announcement and focus was being shifted back towards IP that EA directly owns and is going to bolster support for their current projects and that's probably going to be Apex Legends. Now all of these decisions to let people go by game studios whether they're independent or they're owned by bigger producers it's all coming from the COVID pandemic. We saw huge explosive growth for the industry with players all over the world suddenly having a lot more time on their hands. Studios and teams saw this and they poured cash into projects and they were hiring people all over the place. Player numbers on games were rising, revenue was skyrocketing and then share prices for those bigger companies were soaring as well. Now that bubble, it hasn't burst so to speak, but certainly the market has returned to a more normal state. Studios and producers are correcting that by, well, firing people. They don't have that huge abundance of cash flowing through the door that they had two years ago. Because the COVID pandemic is now over, lots of people are not sitting around with nothing to do anymore. They are back at work, which means they've got less time to play video games and they're spending less money on video games as well. As I said earlier, it is really sad to see so many people losing their jobs, but it is happening across the entire gaming industry right now. Studios and producers, they're protecting the value of their assets and their companies. They're also in the middle of a massive cost of living crisis right now, and that means that many of these companies can't realistically expect consumers, the players of these video games, to pay more for their products and services. So one way to protect profits is to cut jobs and cut costs. And that's exactly what EA has chosen to do here. They're cutting 5% of their workforce, they're shutting down a Battlefield single player studio and handing that work over to another established team, and they're cutting a Star Wars project from Respawn and instead choosing to focus on their own IPs, where of course the profit margins will be greater. So where does that leave Battlefield 2025 now? Well, the multiplayer elements remain completely untouched. The Ripple Effect and DICE teams are working on building out the next game in the franchise with Vince Sampella at the helm, someone who has a great track record when it comes to multiplayer experiences. And recently, in the last few days, rumours have now started circling that the Ripple Effect team, also working on Battlefield 2025, has been working on a free-to-play Battle Royale element that will be bolted onto the side of the premium multiplayer experience for this next game, essentially mimicking Call of Duty Warzone. The multiplayer itself is said to be going back to Battlefield's roots with a return to 64 player matches, a four class system and a complete overhaul and rework of the destruction systems that Battlefield pioneered just way back in the day now. Byron Bede is the general manager of the Battlefield franchise overseeing this free to play Battle Royale element and he's probably best placed to do so, as before he joined EA to become part of what Battlefield does, he led live services over at Activision and was a big player in pushing the Warzone product. Now, according to the statement that announced the layoffs, the team working on the next Battlefield game is still the largest ever assembled for the franchise, which, if that is to be believed, and we have leaders like Vince Sampella and Byron Bede at the top with proven track records of success, then I am still looking forward to whatever is coming next for Battlefield. I'm not about to get super hyped, especially with the announcement that certain developers are being taken off of the game, the studio is being shut down, and a lot of work is being shifted from one team over to another team. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of catch-up to play there. So obviously I'm not incredibly hyped about anything that's really gone on in the last couple of days, but I'm still going to be looking forward to the next Battlefield game. I still think the elements there are in place for EA to deliver a good product. I just sincerely hope that EA has learned from past mistakes with Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042, and they do end up delivering a game that Battlefield fans actually want to play. Let me know what you think of all of this though. Are you still excited for the next Battlefield game? Or has this news just tempered your expectations for what's coming next? Let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you soon.